Okay, I'd like to show you this candidate. Um, I believe this is the same fan that Rick Friedrich uses. I had filmed a lot of uh, video on, on how I took the wires out. I didn't rewire the, <clears throat> the stator coils. Um, it's as is. I just brought them out. I used two opposite ones as power power and the other ones as trigger. This is the standard Bedini uh, circuit, you know, with a pot and blah blah blah, the uh, 2N3055. I have input and output. The outputs go to these clamps so I can easily clamp batteries. Input, I just used uh, this female uh, whatever three and a half millimeters or whatever it is <clears throat> usually you have these on the back of uh, uh, your computer um, not exactly because the ones on your computer have an extra pin or an extra line to to check if there is uh, feedback for the battery I think so it's not exactly that but any device that has um, a DC power input has this type of thing okay so it just goes here now uh, the reason I wanted to show you this, the uh, the, the the coil. Uh, well, it's a shame because I did a lot of videos, so I don't know if you're gonna see the video because I lost uh, almost 60 gigs of hard drive, and I don't know if it's gonna be um, I'm go if anyone's gonna be able to to recuperate. But uh, people are working on it, you know. Uh, and uh, but anyway, um, what I've learned from this is I should post uh, uh, pretty much you know right away when I uh, make a video, uh, edit it quickly and succinctly. And uh, the other thing that I learned is that you know all the video that I'm going to shoot is going to be much more compact. Um, so better editing, I think it's going to be better viewing, which is the contrary of what I'm, what I'm doing now, just rambling on. Anyway, I wanted to mention that <clears throat> the the resistance of the coil, it's really fine copper wire, and it goes for 48 volts, the original. So um, it has, I think, 30 ohms of resistance, and two in, in series for the... Uh, for the power, the power coil, and of course also for the uh, trigger coil, so it's the same. But the power coil, so this means that if you divide uh, 48 volts, which is not, I, I didn't even put in 48 volts, I put in like 31 or 32. You divide that by uh, twice, uh, by 60 ohms about, then you get only half an amp uh, through the coils and it really, well, the performance really, it didn't seem to be just running fast. Not that speed has is important in these applications, but it, it is a measure of, of, it is some measure of performance. Uh, but of course, I didn't measure the, uh, the, the peak outputs. Uh, but now also, um, this pot is shot, which happens almost every time. This is an El Cheapo 1K pot. Uh, so I'm going to replace it with a 2K10 turn, which I've never shot. And um, of course, I know I want to show you this little, um, whatever you call it. <laughs> it's not a project box, but a project stand. Um, and in general, I want to. I want to. I'm going to show you a better way to do do this even with you know um, scrap wood because essentially if you really want to use your projects to charge battery or to rejuvenate batteries I think you had you should you have to have one compact box you know or device that you can bring to the battery you know hook it up with the clamps um, and uh, the, the power input whatever you choose um, and then just uh, turn it on. If you have two things like this that are connected, that are you know connected with wires, they're gonna rip, and you have to use two hands to move it, and you have to 
it's just very inconvenient. <clears throat> so my idea, which I think is the simplest, uh, without you know creating a whole box, is to put the fan vertically, uh, horizontally, <laughs> but having it blow vertically, and then essentially putting the the box underneath, um, you know, about that height, but having a f sort of a front panel, put all this stuff inside, and the pot showing out, and um, you know, having the clamps and the wires that are the inputs and outputs showing, but <clears throat> this will, you know, allow the stuff to cool, which it really doesn't need. <laughs> Obviously, it's just there's nothing going through here. Uh, it doesn't get warm to the touch, barely. Um, and but at least the the, the air is going to blow upwards, you know, sucking air through the opening. There's going to be only two sides, making this two sides of wood, you know, like these uh, slats that I took from a, a broken IKEA chair. So uh, here's gonna cut it two lengths, put one here and one here. And then on the front, I'm gonna have this uh, similar thin piece, which is gonna be a front panel. And you know, of course with openings, with probably an opening so the air is not coming in through only through one side but the air is then blowing blowing upwards and you can use it on your desk without having catching a cold or being annoyed by air blowing uh, papers away uh, blowing in your face etc so I need to fix that oh yeah the other thing I wanted to show you this running but I'm not set up here um, <clears throat> interestingly uh, so this thing, you know, because it shot, it has a, it has a non-linear response. But if I if I remove this pot, it seems like the it seems like it needs more resistance. It's possible because it's a lot of turns, and so it induces a high spike. But um, so if I uh, bridged that bridge this thing so it's actually remove it and, and and short circuit here then it wasn't running at all no then it was running but slow and if I remove the the resistor completely then it wasn't running at all so it looks like it needs more resistance so I'm gonna put in a 2k pot and see what happens um, and then I'll show you that <clears throat> 